Hey guys, it's Ebene of R&B Vibes and I am with a hit maker, okay? Period. Now, you might not know this, but literally every song, damn near, <laughs> that you hear is a Nija Charles production. Hi, gorgeous. How are you? Hello. I'm great. How are you? I, I'm blown away. Okay, it's it's really, it, the word is blown away. You have been doing nothing but hits since you were a kid, it seems like. I mean, what is up with that? How do you start... Yeah. So early in knowing how your pen machine works how do you know you know I feel like it's definitely intuition and just gut and following like what feels good like I mm. never I never thought of it as a job and that's really how I got into it it was my hobby I was just doing what was fun to me and I think just following that instinct of like this is what I like this is what I want to hear was able to I was able to keep that you know that that um originality in the music and that aura in the music and you know thankfully everybody else liked it as well so <laughs> that was really how I was able to you know get in the industry being young because again I turned my hobby into a career you did now to give y'all a little bit of a list okay I, I can't go throughout the whole thing because we're gonna be here more than an hour <laughs> but just to give you a, a little list that what we got we got no guidance right mm -hmm. we have ring that's cardi b mm -hmm. we have i do cardi b we have my power not only write written but also sung okay yeah. singing on it too and then we also have uh, positions we have rain on me I, like I said, I'm not gonna keep going because I, I we ain't got the time. But it's it's incredible how many you have in, under your belt. Now let's start from the top, okay? You were in school, you were um, doing the music, doing both of them, you know, going back to forth, doing studio sessions, going to school. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine doing that, but there was a decision that you had to make, and of course, your parents had to. Uh, you know, I had to think about that too. Tell me about that decision of going straight into music, doing it full time and going for it all. Yeah, I mean, you know, I grew up in a a, a black home raised by a black woman who <laughs> you know, definitely made education a priority. Like it was uh, she was like, you're, you're doing what? No, you're going to school. So it was very hard because I also was raised with those values of like, if you start something, you have to finish it. So I wanted mm -hmm. to finish school, but my career was also taken, um, you know, was taken off at the time and it was it was extremely hard because again like I've never started something and not finished it and I was trying my best to like figure out you know workarounds um but you know God really just led me to the right decision and you know I was low-key forced to take a leave of absence and focus on my career and everything just fell into place everything that yeah. happened happened for a reason so um I was able to you know sign a publishing deal and get you know various opportunities and move out to LA and I was you know at first I was like oh I'm only gonna be here for like a year to three years and I'm gonna you know finish up school and within that first year I was like oh wait a minute I don't need to go back to school because I'm <laughs> and then yeah. my called me to come and speak to the school so I'm like oh I really don't need to go back to school wait they called you to speak to the school yeah, yeah, girl, that that's done. But aside from God telling you, you got this. You don't need to worry about anything. You Absolutely. got it. Absolutely. <laughs> well, tell me about that conversation though. When you're like talking to your folks and you're like, "Hey, I think I might have to drop out." What was that conversation yeah. like? I remember. So, <sighs> it really wasn't me who was having that conversation. It was a man named Jay uh, Jay Grand. He. Uh, was one of the head director, uh, director of ANRs over at RCA, and he was like my music dad. Um, and he was working with me in New York at the time, and he was like, "Listen, I'm gonna take your mom out to dinner, and I'm <laughs> gonna let her know what's going on." And if you know Jay Grant, you know he's like hella blunt. So we all went to the this like little Mexican restaurant, um, and he's like, "Okay, you know, we need to figure out something for your daughter because she she has to get out of school. Her career is." popping off like she has cuts with Chris Brown and you know all these other people and you know so many people are throwing money at her and opportunities her way she is not going to progress by staying in school so we need to figure <laughs> out something and how can I help and that you know opened my mom's eyes and then I played her a record with Chris Brown's voice on it and she was like oh this is real so that <laughs> was what that was what really like made her take a you know a step out on faith and was like well 
all right, you know, let, let's try it. Let's see. So thankfully that conversation, you know, eased my mom, my mom up a little bit and allowed for her to, you know, feel a little bit more comfortable about me, like taking a step back from school. And then I had that cushion of like, it's only going to be a year. I'm taking a leave of absence. Like just a gap year. <laughs> <laughs> I love the lies. You got to sit up. <laughs> but I really believe at the time. That yeah. Was <laughs> I mean, hey, you believed it, and you had, and honestly, you had to say what you had to say. For me, I, I think that if I would have just said Chris Brown, my mom would have been like, <laughs> "Get out!" <away." laughs> I would hope that she'd be like, "Get out!" It's okay. <laughs> right. Right. But you know that you were you were already prepared in a sense because you come from a musical, a musically inclined family, you know, and you already had that that tutelage from from your folks. And of course, which is weird, by the way, I gotta side note this. Your dad's a DJ, your mom's a mechanical engineer. Was that correct? Yes. How the hell did that happen? I just don't understand. That's just a me thing. Do my research. Yeah. I'm like, how the hell y'all meet? <laughs> So my, my, my parents actually grew up together. Like my grandparents oh. were weddings. So, you know, my, my parents were best friends. Like my aunts and uncles are on both sides. Like we're hanging out. Like I think I have a picture of all of them hanging out when they were like five. So, oh. you know, they were both just kids and, you know, basically like, you know, they just grew up with each other. So both having different interests, but they both connected over music because my mom still really loves music. She just didn't pursue it for a career, you know, mm. but my parents are house heads. Like that's what my mom does in her free time. Like they go to the clubs. Like my mom was pregnant. <laughs> club with them, okay. So no. <laughs> Not on the dance floor about to have you been like, pop out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh my gosh, well, it's in your blood. Music is in your blood. And it's so crazy. Like I said, so young, having a fresh start in it and, and doing all these incredible things. But you was your start with Chris Brown? Was that what really ignited more for you to, to go pursue it some more? Or what was that pivotal moment or that, that opportunity that said, you know what? Th this is this is a lot. This is it. I mean, the 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 song that I had with Chris Brown was definitely the validation I needed. Um yeah where it was personally for me, where it was like, okay, I can do this. You know, something's working because I love this man and I hear him singing my stuff. Amen. Okay. Yeah. So I'm like, I can, I can keep going. It was, it was definitely validation for me, but I would say that the song that really liked that, that, that really like popped me off and made me, you know, really realize like this was, you know, definitely something I was meant to do was Cardi B's ring with a uh, featuring Ooh. K because it was it was my first radio hit and it was it happened in my first year and mm -hmm. the impact that it had on people and seeing like all my friends in school and everybody you know singing along to it on their snapchats and instagrams and stuff it definitely opened my mind up and you know gave me a whole new perspective on you know working in music Girl, can I please, but real quick, say thank you to you <laughs> for that song? Because do you not know every single time, like I, the last dude that we messed up on me, I was like, you don't hit my line no more. <laughs> oh, girl, was boom. You know when you figure it out and you hit that note. Yeah, that's how you know you felt it. Yes, and you <laughs> and all your music, I'm just like, mm, and girl, it's it's just you know how to get that that feeling, that flow, and it's crazy because. I don't think, how do you know already what these situations will make you feel like when you probably didn't even go through it yourself yet? Yeah, I mean, that was, a, especially at that time, a lot of the things I was, you know, writing about d did not happen to me because I was like yeah. 18, 19. So it's really just like, I think inspiration comes from so many different places. I'm um, talking to people um, like, you know, Christian could tell you too, like there'll be times he'll be telling me about something. I'm like, Wow, cool story you have. And next thing <laughs> I'm going into the booth singing his whole story. Like, <sighs> you know? so nobody's I'm, safe I'm, around you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But also, like, there can be like an, a smallest thing that happened to me, and I'm able to like bring more to the story in the song. So I, I get inspiration from so many different places that, like, thankfully, that's a gift of mine that I'm able to take, you know. Uh, lemons and make lemonade out of it you know when it comes to the music was there ever a, a situation or a scenario that you did not you just couldn't catch on to that you found it kind of hard to relate to in order to write about nah. no no 
<laughs> not really. Not really. I mean, there, because there, there's a bunch of situations that like, again, even like talking about, you know, environments that I've never even been in or things that I've never even seen. I've been talk. I've talked about places I've never even been to, you know, and, and ex explaining, you know, the the great things about it in songs. And I'm like, as long as I'm able to like research it, Google it or, you know, talk to somebody and get their experience of it, like I'm able to become a vessel and yeah. you know filter all that you know through me so there's never actually been I don't think any scenario where I'm like you know what <laughs> I I can't write about that you know <laughs> <laughs> you research you find you and you like okay I can get in my vibe with this yeah now, now tell me though tell me though uh when it comes to when it comes to writing when you know figuring out the format how did you how, what helped you figure out what was a proper way to piece together a song, a proper way to to really connect with it? What 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 was that to help you do that? Um, I think for me, it was always just like studying. Well, not even studying, but at the time, just like replicating what I heard on the radio. So mm. every like the structure is pr pretty much the same in most songs, where it's like you know verse pre hook and then a bridge at the end um I kind of just replicated that and you know just my instincts knowing that that's like the structure of the song but also like you know once I started working in pop and learning from other people and you know taking little bits by bits from other people and you know taking those little nuggets and putting it into my own stuff um that's how I was able to learn just like how a song is supposed to, you know, sound. But also, again, mm. it's just going off of that gut feeling of like, okay, this sounds right. Or if there's something that feels off, I'm like, okay, let me pinpoint that and, you know, take that out, you know, doing too much here, doing too much there. It's just all about feeling for me. See, I've talked to many uh, singer songwriters and y'all talking about this particular formula that they had to to learn in order to to get this perfect piece it's perfect song and I'm always curious if there is a, a particular structure or if it's just a feeling that you have when writing a song to know this is this is how it should sound this is how it should be but I guess it just depends on the, the person right yeah it depends on the person it depends on the song it depends on the vibe because again like there's some songs where it's just like no structure at all and it just feels good yeah. you know and then also some records where you need a structure where everybody else can follow along so it just it just depends on what the song calls for and you're never going to know that until you're actually in there like crafting it so you know I take it you know scenario by scenario and you know that's that's the beauty of it you got to be malleable to you know every song that you know is needing to be written well let's go back to to 18 19 year old you sitting in a yeah. room with all these uh these people these older folks and sitting there and, and having an opinion <laughs> and they're looking at you like who this kid Right. <laughs> did you ever get somebody that was just like um we ain't talking to her right now she she not only you're young but then you're a female mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. well you, you got some stories from me what was the feeling like what, what happened yeah I mean that happened a lot especially at the time because again one like I look young now so just imagine when I was Girl. like <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like I remember I was in the studio with Meek one time and he was like after after a good like hour he was like oh I thought you were somebody's like sister or something I didn't even know Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that was like yeah. my first time and I was like you know honestly I didn't even take it to heart because like I understand especially like me coming into an environment and like mm -hmm. you know I'm just this little girl who you know like what was she doing here so there's been plenty of times but also being a female like being in a you know male dominated room you know a lot of times I feel like a lot of female spaces that um sometimes the man men men will overlook the female not even introduce themselves so that's happened to me mm -hmm. um, and it was it's almost like I'd have to prove myself with the music and then after it, it was like I gained the respect so to say uh, so to speak so you know eventually it, it still low-key happens to this day but um which definitely needs to change in the industry but um in the beginning I definitely got a lot of that for my age you know my gender and mm -hmm. you know just also just manners See, I get that because I'm the youngest talent here at the radio station. And even when it comes to doing events or whatever, 
it's a very it's a very male dominated space. Radio is, and a lot of TV, even personalities in there, um, it's male dominated. It's very mm -hmm. heavy with them. And so when I go into arena, arenas and I go into rooms, they're like, "Who? Who is this woman?" Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, once I have my opinion, I'm and I'm formulating a thought process and I'm telling them an idea, and it's actually good. They're like, "Oh, mm -hmm. what you about?" And I'm like, "No, I just really walked in here from McDonald's and I just said." Yeah. Let's just you know, take a shot at it and see what happens. You know, it's a little yeah. disrespectful, but you have to, of course, tell yourself in those moments, you know, what they, they may not understand or see me at this moment, but they will get me soon. Eventually they will. And exactly. now they, they drop a respect in that name. Now they, you cannot mess with your name. Exactly. So your inspiration. Yeah. Thank you. You know, and my inspiration is my mom because she, she prepped me for that all my life. Like I watched my mom, you know, be a boss, you know, at Verizon, you know, growing up, like her really having all these employees under her. And she would like, tell me all the time, like, you know, people are going to doubt you. People are, you know, not going to acknowledge you or like try to like not even give you paid the respect that you deserve. But as long as you know what you're doing, you know, from front to back, they can't tell you nothing and they're going to have to respect you. And, you know, that was just like the confidence that she instilled in me growing up. So, you know, that's why I was able to like really roll everything off my back and just know every time I step in a room, I know what I'm doing here. I know what I came to do. And, you know, y'all gonna have to give me respect. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna take the mic. This is my room. I got this now. <laughs> <laughs> and I like how and it, I feel like your mom, she instilled um, like a no fear type of thing with you. You don't have any fear when you walk into a room. There is no intimidation. Right. You just yeah. take it. Exactly. And thankfully, I grew up around a lot of boss ass women like um, <laughs> my aunt like owns her own business. She's a hairstylist. I grew up with my grandmother who owns her, her own daycare like she has been owning a daycare for like since my dad was a child. And it's like the daycare of the oh, whole. Wow. Thing. So <laughs> I've just grown up around black women who, you know, assert their authority and they they, they don't take no no mess mm, yeah 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> well you definitely uh work with a lot of black women too that they don't take no mess going to beyonce i mean mm -hmm. that is an iconic situation how did you even link up with beyonce i don't know I okay don't i'll know. take it <laughs> to this day like i have like my own theory but i still to this day don't know exactly how she found out about me i have you know just some ideas okay. but Again, I just got a call one day and they said show up to this place at this time and I was there. <laughs> Next time I was in Paris. Okay. <laughs> I wish I had that phone call. Can, can you be in, I need you to be in Paris about two hours. Let me also want to talk to you. You know what? I'm already packed. I was just trying to make sure you know my flight details. That's all. That's already packed. But that had to be such a moment meeting her and, and then writing with her, you no, know, singing with her. Tell mm -hmm. me how what how did that feel and how was it like working collaborating with Beyonce? It's always a, a blessing working with her, and there's always so much that I learn from her because she's such like a perfectionist and a hardworking woman. Like I thought I've seen some hardworking women, but when you see her in action, you're like, oh, I ain't doing nothing. I need to go harder, and that's like you know the thing the the feeling I get whenever we do work together. And then when she kept me on the song, like. It's just there. There's just you know she just has this humbleness to her that is just so crazy. Like she asked me like, oh, would you be comfortable staying on the song? Like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. <Don't... laughs> what did you? So wait, you did not know that she was gonna put you on the song. You you did. It wasn't like a. Oh, no, wow. I, I was so you know again we were doing it for the the Lion King and you know I was writing ideas for some of the um some of the Afrobeat artists to get on. And it was just my voice, I guess, was just what she liked. And she was like, yeah. you know, can you can you stay on it? And I'm like, what am I going to tell Beyonce? No. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> We're crazy. Like, you know, I, can, I can't. Matter of fact, I can do that. I can clean. I can do whatever. I, I can rap, too. I, whatever you need. I can be <laughs> like a babysit, like whatever you need. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just with her, it's like with both of them, right? With Jay-Z too. I mean, yeah. you really got in good touch with both of them. And did they teach you anything, any type of words of wisdom that you've taken away from working with them? No, you still do, but something that you was like, okay, this, this is something I'm gonna keep as a key moment of my life. Yeah. I remember in Paris, uh, Jay-Z was actually talking about, you know, 
um, his still dream moment. And it was just that idea of, you know, knowing your worth and, mm. um, and not always taking the money, you know? So, you know, the, the story goes, um, you know, again, like he, I don't, I don't know if, if this story is public, so I'm not even going to say it, but basically yeah. knowing your, knowing your worth. Yeah. Is it also the, is it the narrative of how knowledge can be more than the, than the finance? Is that also the situation too? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's again, like knowing, knowing the business, knowing the music business. Um, and again, like just, just knowing your worth, knowing your worth. Yeah, a lot of artists that I deal with nowadays, especially my local artists that I talk to here, they sometimes get get that little confused knowledge and payment. It's like sometimes the payment isn't within the knowledge, especially if you're just trying to launch yourself, especially, especially trying to get yourself out there. Take that knowledge, take that, okay, I'm going to be seen, I'm going to be heard, I'm going to be out there. I need this, this type of inspiration, I need this experience in order to get to the next step. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, it's all going to work out at the end of the day. So yeah. it, it's good to teach that. I, and I love that you showcase that. Yes. Now, I need to um, ask you about this Ariana Grande and Lady Gaga situation. Yeah. Because, not just because, you know, it topped the charts and everything. Because, you know, shout out to you. Because it definitely <laughs> did. How I still do. I, 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 it's, the, it's two different things for me. It's one, during the pandemic, you having to create such a, master, a magical piece. And then on top of that, you taking yourself away from being labeled as just an urban writer. Mm -hmm. Wow. So let's start with the pandemic. Yeah. And I've already got nothing to do. What's, what, what we do? How, how did you think of a song during the pandemic? I'm thinking about how to get some bread. You thinking about, you know what, this song goes together. So... <laughs> What was the thought process like of creating that song? So actually that song was written um, way before the pandemic. And oh, wow. you know, Gaga, like she took the reins on that. I, I just helped out. Um, mm. That was done way before the pandemic. Um, and it was just, you know, timing was perfect. Well, I guess it wasn't perfect because it was a party song during the pandemic, but the <laughs> <laughs> you know, that I'm coming up. You know, so I'm just thankful that it did. Um, but yeah, like I remember during that time, like I had started to get close with Ariana anyway. Um, and it was just, again, like I have always been so versatile, even when it comes to the music that I listen to. So I never wanted to be pigeonholed. And I started to see that, that again, you know, working in the music industry, you know, it's, it's definitely, you wouldn't think that, you know, you see color, but mm -hmm. I was definitely reminded of that, um, that, you know, even though I'm able to write all these different things, people are still going to, you know, look at me and say, hey, can you write me an R&B song? But it's like, I can write all these other genres, too. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely thankful that, like, I got the opportunity opportunity with Rain on me to showcase that because I'm like, thank you. This is so far left from what people would think that I would do. And th this is like the proof you know, that I guess the outside world needs. Unfortunately, it still happens to this day, even, yeah. you know, with pop hits under my belt, but that comes with the territory of being a black woman, you know? This is true. Now, was it, mm -hmm. what is the differences in writing, if there is any differences in writing an R&B song versus a pop song? Is there a difference at all? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it's way more structured um, in pop. Like you definitely have to follow the the pop structure and, um, follow the rules when it comes to like the uh, the syllables and everything and the math of everything. Um, and I would say like the melodies, like in R and B, like it's it's so feeling based and mm -hmm. you know riffs and you know exercising the the vocal talent and even the way that we talk, like you know putting ebonics in there and all that, you know. But in pop, like it's just black and white. So it's definitely <laughs> like uh, it's a it's down the middle. So it's definitely like a difference between writing R and B and then writing pop. And then also with rap, rap is uh, you can do the abonics. You got to get a little in your hood phase a little bit. Yeah, in your yeah. hood bag. <laughs> do you have about it? Is it's witty because you got to find you. Uh, the, the beauty about rap is you all and R and B. You always got to find you know some cool way to say something that's always being done it's just rap especially just our culture is always evolving when it comes to you know um slang and all of that so it's just always about innovation and finding new ways to you know be ahead of everybody else so it keeps you on your toes 
<laughs> but do you have a favorite though? Writing for so many different genres, do you have a favorite? Um, do I have a favorite? Of course, for me, because this is just what I listen to mostly is R and B. Of course. That that's that's my favorite. It's like second nature. Um, and it's the closest thing to gospel. So, you know. You're very in touch with your spiritual side, aren't you? Oh yeah, for sure. Like I grew up in the church, you know, my grandma is still sings in the choir. Um, so yeah, I, I'm definitely in touch with it for sure. Yeah, I can tell. I love how when you speak, you speak with with this confidence and this light that's on, that's on you. I said the same thing to, uh, I just ended an interview with this girl named Susan Carroll and uh, to the same thing with her. I'm like, it's just this energy that's around you. It's so godly like, and it's, it's inspiring. It's welcoming. So I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Of course. Now, you know, I'm still stuck on the fact that, you know, from singing to songwriting, from songwriting to singing, I, I, I can't believe that you decided to say, you know what, I'm going to keep pursuing the singing. The singing is still going to push. We're going to keep going with it. What yeah. told you, you know what, I'm going to keep going with the singing? Because you have a beautiful voice. And I, by, hold up, what is it? Beautiful lies. I'm beautiful mad at you. Lies. That song got stuck in my head for two weeks. And I, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it no more. I love the song. I had a, I was like, I just, it, I just in my head, it's a bop. It is a bop. Thank what told you, you, you know what, singing is where I want to go to? You know, I think once I got in the industry, it's always, you know, been in my mind. But the validation that I got was from Beyonce. It was like, I remember I was playing her, um, heard about us. Um, mm -hmm. She was like, you have the most beautiful tone in the world. And I'm like, no, you do. So <laughs> I think yeah. hearing that Beyonce definitely like gave me that confidence, like, well, maybe like I should be staying on these records. And then literally the next year she kept me on the record. So it was like, if this ain't the sign that I needed, like they they are pushing me in the spotlight. Like I cannot run from it even if I tried. So it was like, you know, just stop, stop shying away from it and, you know, own it, embrace it. And once I did that, I'm like, I make music all day, every day. I got all yeah. these different sounds that I want to try that I'm not always able to do for other people. And I have my own stories to tell. So it was just like, now that I've got gotten the hits out the way, I mean, of course I'm still get some, but it's like, I need to also give myself, you know, that, that time to shine as well. And I'm happy that I'm doing it. Well, tell me about that moment, your first time in the studio, you know, that you've like done Beyonce, you've done all these amazing things. Now, it's putting it all back on you. And now you're in the studio. You have your own song. You hear the beat. And it's your voice. Ain't nobody else. What was that moment like? It was freedom. It was like freedom. Because I remember, like, it, it was also a little pressure, I will say. Because, you know, writing for other people, again, you're acting as a vessel. Like, it's almost like a shield. You're able to tell other people's stories. And, you know, I get to still be that private person. Mm -hmm. But when I was in that studio by myself, it's like, now, like I'm showing all my cards, you know, I'm putting all my feelings and all the things that I'm thinking into the song. So it's like, I don't got nothing to hide no more. Um, but also it's like on the creative side, it's, it's freeing because I don't have to, you know, ask someone if they like it, you know, make sure that they like it or whatever. And I get to exercise like my full range of my voice, try as many weird things as I want and you know, do whatever I feel. So, you know, it, it, it was definitely those two things um, that sat with me that first time in the studio. But, you know, the beauty of it is that, you know, I, I love it. <laughs> and I know that you don't have no fear in taking tasking on or taking on your own song and being able to render it because I feel like I'll be more afraid, of course, trying to this is me trying to get out somebody else's narrative versus my own. Mm. Then again, doing my own narrative makes me more vulnerable, makes me more open, makes me more in tune with my own emotions, which makes me say, yeah, do I really am I really confident in somebody else being able to understand exactly where I'm coming from? versus being confident that I, somebody else will understand what somebody else is coming from. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I get girl, it. Girl. I don't know how you do it. Do you, you have to have some type of motivation, some type of word that you say to yourself every single day that you get up. I, the motivation that I have is that like, I'm, I'm still in touch with like my friends from back home, my family. And, you know, I try to remember what the world is like outside of like the music bubble. Mm -hmm. And everybody got nine to fives. And I always have to remember that, like, 
I'm also blessed to like live this life and be doing what I love to do for, you know, for a living and to wake up every day doing what you love is something that, that not many people, not all people get to do. So I'm like, that's all the motivation I need is like, I want to be great. And, you know, I have a gift and I'm exercising my gift every day and I get to make something new every day. So it's always this type of excitement that I have of like, it's never going to be the same old, same old, because I'm always going to have a chance to create. I'm I'm an inventor and innovator, you know? Yeah. I'm so happy for you, girl. You just made me inspired. You made me go outside and build a build a building. Just so I can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it all. <laughs> well, let me ask you. I know you since you have your your hand in so many different things in the R and B's in your heart. But would you ever create a pop song or maybe do a rap lyric for your own self? Would you ever do that? I think, I think it has to be a blend, a blend of mm. everything. It has to be a blend, and I wouldn't. I never say never. Never say never. Um, but again, it just has to feel authentic to, to my own sound. Like, I feel like what I'm crafting now, um, Mm -hmm. a a genre, genre bounding and, you know, um, I mean, bending, um, but again, it it has to stay, it has to be cohesive. So I wouldn't say that I wouldn't do a straight up pop song or any of that, but just thinking about it, I'm like, it it has to be some type of blend, some type of blend. (laughs) Like I do, I do add pop structures into my music and like, do. and using like rap cadences. Like that's what I do now. But who knows? Who knows what's in the future? I mean, listen, you can do just like I said before, just about anything. You can take your, you probably could do a rock song. I mean, like a metal rock type of song, mm-hmm. head bashing. It's, please don't do that. <laughs> please don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Hey, my head hurts. <laughs> but <laughs> rock on. <laughs> You know, I, it is, it's, it's empowering. It's, it's impactful. And I know that somebody is listening to you right now that's a singer or a songwriter or someone that's interested in music, but they don't understand what to do next. They, they get inspiration from you. So what is a key word of advice that you always give to people when they want some kind of want to learn from you? What's the key wisdom that you always give them? Always trust yourself, mm-hmm. trust your instincts and research. Because I think um, a lot of people don't, they they underestimate how far research can get them. Like, I learned a lot of, you know, what I've learned from YouTube University, you know? Really? Being, you Just YouTube and how to do certain things online has made me so, so self-sufficient. And even, like, finding programs to further my education. Like, a lot of people feel stuck where they're at or, like, they have no they don't know how to get the knowledge that they want. And it's just like, you guys are underestimating the research. Like we have the whole internet, you know, in the palm of our hands. So I think that's one of my biggest um, forms of advice to people as well too. It's just like, get on that internet and <laughs> go search. Okay. <laughs> and then what about those moments where it feels like there is no up, where it feels like you keep hitting a, a wall and you just don't know how to run around it. What is your advice for that one? Um, if it's if if you feel like you're hitting a wall when writing, I would say take a break. Take a break and come back the next day. But if you feel like you're hitting a wall in life, I would say keep going because again, like when you finally see that light, those walls is gonna, you know, you're, you're gonna be able to appreciate that, you know, once the light comes. But it's always like at the end of the tunnel when it comes to that, like. I know so many people that just feel like they're stuck and it's just like, you just got to keep going because you don't know how close you are. Mm, and I tell you, she knows, hunty, she knows. <laughs> 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 okay, well, we got more music coming out, of course. We got nothing but hits coming out. Uh, tell me what is coming up next when it comes to your music? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually finished up my next project right now. Um, I got a new single coming out soon called Unruly. Um, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited about it, especially because like, again, with the first project, my first single, um, I touched on R&B drill, um, and me being from the East coast, like it's definitely just like something that is just so close to me and I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it, you know? So, um, I can't wait for it to come out. You know, I had to write out some of the songs, the key songs that, that highlight to me from you. Yes. Uh, someone else. Ooh. <laughs> uh beautiful eyes. 
and you don't love her. You know what? I like you. What? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love a lot. I love a lot of your music. I really do. But some about those three, maybe it tells me, maybe it tells you a little too much about myself. But yes, that's what I like you. I like you. <laughs> you <don't talk> <laughs> <laughs> it's something about them three, but I got a notate. You don't love her. I, I, I just sitting there. I'm like, damn, you're going to make somebody realize, bro, you, you messing up your own self. You really are. Yeah. You missing all on this. I'm so glad that like that's what you interpreted too because you know I people talking to me about that song I've I've heard a, a bunch of different interpretations and you know again that's what music is made for you know it's up to you to decide like what what it means to you but when I was making that song like people some people felt like I was like being bitter or like being jealous and I'm like oh no not the place that I was in it was me calling a spade a spade like hey like I know you and you're doing all of this like to get over me like you do not love that lady like mm -hmm. you know so I'm, I'm glad that you know that that's what you got out of it too that makes me feel good yes well I took away from it because that's how I always feel now listen um <laughs> no, <laughs> like, bro, you missing out on this you did all that <laughs> It's okay. You just have a little issue. You and your feet. feet. <laughs> um, someone else though. I'm curious the interpretation you may re receive from that song. Has anybody? What What was it that somebody told you? Because I feel like if you listen to it, some people might think a toxicity. They oh, yeah. might. Yeah. Is that what you got from from the for the feedback? I mean, I definitely got that. I definitely got that. It was a little toxic, and it's just like. Honestly, it probably is, but I feel like that's the reality of a lot of people and whether they want to speak on it or not, it's like, that's what happens. Like, I know a lot of people, including myself, who at least one time have like dated other people in order to help them get over somebody, you know, it's really the, you know, the same as you don't love her. Like, I'm, it's just the opposite perspective. Like now I'm doing it too. Like I like that, even if, even if you're not fully over somebody because i i think that most people don't actually date the next person until they're uh fully over like if you really love somebody that love mm -hmm. is gonna stay for a very long time exactly and i just think it's a little unrealistic for you to move on when it's when the love is a hundred percent going like I don't know. I feel like people date in order to, you know, spark some new interest and, you know, again, help that love diminish. So that's it. it if it's a little toxic, then so <laughs> be. But it's just it's, it's it's reality. It's reality. It is. Hey, nothing wrong with a rebound relationship. As long as <laughs> all parties understand what's happening, that's what's going on. This is a rebound relay, relay <laughs> charge. Just <laughs> all the REs. That's what this is. Okay, don't get confused. Now, if love comes out of it, I don't think so, but it might. It's impossible. <laughs> For me, it exactly. never does. But... <laughs> exactly. And sometimes it's not even that deep. Like sometimes it might not be a full blown relationship, but like a little date here and there, a dinner or something like that's going to help uh, get wash away the heartbreak. Like it does. <laughs> Listen, take me some flowers. Give me some flowers. Take me out some food, especially some good, good food, hunty. I promise exactly. you, you are helping healing me. <laughs> <laughs> You're healing me. But you know, being someone that has seen love in a way where it's it's unfiltered, it's clear from the beginning to the end like your folks and, uh, and then a best friendship out of it best friend and relationship and then in love your love life must be a little bit different you must do you want someone that is friend first then get into a relationship and all of that or are you someone that says you know what because you know some people just jump into it nowadays we gotta be real nowadays people just send a dm and that's it we in love yeah no that that's not me at all uh especially like you just connected the dots i haven't even thought about that but yeah like seeing my parents and my, my grandparents like it has to be friends first like whenever i'm dating that's that's always the thing like i don't ever want to jump into something which is why like i don't you know i haven't been to in too many relationships because like i take that so seriously you know so it, we have to if, if i can't be your friend and you can't be my friend and i can't laugh with you and and you know be goofy around you like we don't need to be taking it a step further like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no right so, about that. 
friendship first, but especially for me. Do you have any fears when it comes to love or relationships at all? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a bunch of fears when it comes to love and relationships. Like, again, like I, I well, my parents have been divorced, but they separated like love ending and, you know, also being in the 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 place that I'm in, like having money and, you know, notoriety and, you know, all these accomplishments, like you got to worry about, you know, are you with me for me or do you like the idea of me more than, mm. you know, there's, there's so many fears when it comes to love. I feel like now that I have more than ever, you know, before, now that I'm, I'm at where I'm at in life. But um, again, at the end of the day, just got to take it step by step and just, you know, be extra cautious. So how do you protect yourself? How do you protect your your heart when it comes to because you're in the R and B space? I mean, we gotta be honest. Being R and B space, it's it's a little difficult, a little different. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie. When I see a male artist performing his heart out, sometimes it's like Evan A interview, not talking about you. It's a different. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how do you protect your peace? There we go. Man, protecting my peace. That's all I do. I think that's also what, like why it's so hard for me to, um, well, not for me, but for people to feel, um, to get a gauge on how I'm feeling because I'm so like, I don't want to say stone cold or poker faced, but it's just like, it takes a while for me to warm up. So that's how I protect my peace. Cause I gotta, I gotta see what's going on. And I feel like I got a good judge of character. Like I'm able to keep what's going on. Also, I'm just, I'm just, you know, seeing the situation and, and, and trying to, trying to see what you got going on, you know, so I, so I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I tell you, no matter what, if they do come to you with the wrong point of view, you're going to write about it. And you <laughs> So be careful. Oh. <laughs> like, be careful with me. Be careful with me. <laughs> <laughs> now listen i gotta know you worked with a lot of people a lot of people is there someone you have not worked with yet that you really want to work with yes i still want to work with the weekend i still want to work with the weekend oh. um rihanna and um who else do i really want to work with and ice spice i love ice spice are you serious ice spice yes i love oh. ice spice like i'm such a big fan like i feel like the way number one like her getting on jersey club beats and like rapping so nonchalantly and just like very conversational like i feel like she's one of my home girls like back home so she just brought like this energy even like talking the way my friends speak like and having this confidence like i love it and still being able to dance and bop to it so mm -hmm. i i really do love her music so that that's definitely somebody that i want to i want to work with still I am very surprised. She said, "Ice Spice." I've never. I, that is such a shocker. But it's hey. But hey, I mean, it, it's gonna it's gonna happen. I know for sure, for sure, the Reed Reed collab is gonna happen when she's ready yes. to put out that album. Come but on. <laughs> we, we've all been asking, we've all been waiting, and it's just like, woman, when? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So do we do we have a date for for the new music from you coming out? Do we have a date for it yet? Um, just no, oh, very, Lord. very, very soon. Very soon. I don't know the the um, exact date, mm. uh, but just know within these. It's very soon. It's very soon. <laughs> be now listen, she gave you about six varies, <laughs> so it wasn't eight. So eight is yeah. longer than six. Yeah. So we, it's it's coming up. You know, she could have gave you about fifteen varies, but she said six is home base. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do that. That's how soon it is. And yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying, to, to, trying to drop it before the end of the summer. I'm crossing my fingers. I need my bob. I'm going to keep on with my songs I got now. You know, you gave me some bobs. So you gave me a, a beautiful yes. visual uh, experience, by the way. The visual experience behind each song is amazing. I, I can't. When I saw you in that tub, I said, what room is she in? <laughs> 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 but it's a but you you do have amazing music and i need to know how can our listeners stay connected with you and also get to get more from you yes um so i'm very active on my social media um everything is at amnesia underscore so a m n i j a underscore um and just you know always just comment like you know, DM me. I'm always, I'm always on my page looking, liking. I see everything. Um, I'm trying to do more to like stay connected with the fans, like giving free merch and stuff like that. And just, 
you know, communicating on Twitter. So just always reach out to me because that's the way, that's the way, you know, to talk to me. Um, but music is coming. Trust me. They have been already knocking on my DM doors and threatening <laughs> me to release music. So it's coming. <laughs> Because we need it. I'm knocking my damn self. Bring the music. <laughs> well, I'm excited. When I tell y'all, literally, her pen, it's on fire. This, No matter what she writes or even when she sings, it's a hit. It's a bop. And you've been jamming to it already. So keep on flowing with it. Because her <laughs> flow is tight, baby. It just is what it is. Now, wait, one quick thing before you leave, though. I got to ask you a question. This probably has no storyline at all. Your yeah. necklace. Yeah. I have seen this necklace in every video. Yeah. What is up with this necklace? This is the way I actually write my name. So um, I just I just always love the little nameplate. Like my mom used to buy me like, you know, those little gold nameplates and stuff. Yeah. Um, and But, you know, I wanted to upgrade it and get some diamonds. And I was like, well, what better way to do it? You know, this is one of one and no one writes their name like this or spells mm -hmm. the letters like this. So I just wanted to have a unique chain that nobody else has. And. It's just very, you know, custom to me. So I make sure I wear it all the time. Because, again, I still got that, like, you know, girl from next door, home girl from, from the East Coast nameplate. <laughs> but in a very, like, bourgeois way. Right. I like it. Come on, come on bourgeois. Girl, my name is Ebene. So trust me. I, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well y'all y'all catch y'all catch her vibe and you know like she said she keeps she's she's someone that you're gonna remind yourself of every single damn day because she's memorable she's sweet as hell and a beautiful beautiful talent y'all keep her close to your heart because she's unique as she said it all right and that is r&b vibes for a. what you think that was so good thank you oh, so thank you. much <laughs> i love your energy i love your aura Girl, when I tell you, uh, I think that your manager said that you'll be in Nashville soon. Am I correct? I think I'm right about that. Yeah, yeah, I'll be out there, I think, September. When yeah. you come, you got to come to the station. You got to yeah. come to the damn station. I have to meet you in person and talk, do another interview with you. Because I know between, what, this is this is August, that's September. Between them two, you're going to have another billboard. It's all right, so we can go ahead. <laughs> Working, you're gonna have about four or five little billboard tracks. I'm gonna work it in, yeah. um, but because you, you're you're infectious, you really are. And um, when I say inspirational, it's that is the, the word for you. It's not a gimmick, it's not a make a word, but you are because I couldn't imagine being in the spaces that you have been in at such a young age and then to excel, not just you know, oh, we, we did it and we stopped for a minute, no. It's a continuous excel, uh, acceleration, and I want you uh, acceleration. There we go. And I want you to remind yourself. Of course, you know this. When God puts you in your space, He puts you in your space. Mm -hmm. He will let your opportunities open the doors for you. And when I tell you, the bump open, it knocked down. I mean, every single door <laughs> that you walk into knocks down. You oh. are a leading charge, and I, I, I appreciate you. I really do. Thank you so much. That means so much to me.